Hi, welcome back. So this week I want to show you a very short clip of a presentation that I have been doing. It is a presentation for all of our uh, employees. We have uh, over 100 employees, I believe. Um, our bakehouse and our uh, office and all of our six retail pie shops. It was kind of last minute and there were some requirements. I asked that all of our employees watch Food Inc. so that they could be prepared before this 2020 and beyond presentation that Dave and I had come up with. We wanted to let everybody know where the company is going, where we want to see it moving. We are including the PowerPoint presentation so you don't have to watch this entire video. Like I said, it should only be about 15, 20 minutes uh, once Justin squashes it down. But the PowerPoint presentation, there'll be a link below so that you can download. That has about 57 slides to it. So the 2020 and beyond presentation is a thought that Dave and I had come up with put together and we thought we really needed to make this statement. We need to say it loud and clear. So if you're watching as a, a startup business, as an entrepreneur, maybe you're in the bakery business as well, or deli or restaurant or grocery store, but we are in the food industry and I feel a huge responsibility for us as kind of the middleman between the farmer and the consumer, we're one of the links in a very long chain between the farmer and consumer. We need to really put a stop to the environmental crisis that we're in. We can help as food people. So it really starts with the farmer and what they're asked to grow, whether they're growing chickens or pigs or vegetables or GMO corn or GMO soybean, they're gonna grow what they're asked to grow, what there is a need for. And so if you are in the food industry and you are manufacturing something, so we have items that we have soybean oil in. So now we are saying no, if that's GMO soybean oil, we don't want it coming into our facility. So we're doing all these specifications that we're putting together for our vendors. Um, we're asking for lab tests and reports, and it's going to be a long process. There is a lot of GMO corn and soy that's coming in. What if the cow that the milk came from that we're ordering, what if the cow had eaten GMO grain um, that was sprayed with Roundup? It's sprayed with glyphosate at 200 parts per million, the government allows. What is the quality of that milk? What was the health of that cow? What about the eggs that you're eating for breakfast? You're eating eggs and bacon, for instance. Um, how was that pig or that chicken treated? Were they in a confined, concentrated feedlot? So is that chicken truly healthy and happy? Is that a sustainable way to move forward with your business as a chicken farmer or chicken manufacturing plant that you run? Um, what about the pigs? Are they not even able to turn around? They're standing on cement slabs all day. So I talk about this in the presentation and I am speaking out to all of the other food manufacturers. If your core mission, if your core values, if your mission is to help make a change in a positive way, to help repair and restore our environment, then I wanna know, I wanna hear from you, what is your mission? What about you as a consumer? What kind of food are you eating? Do you have any kind of a goal or a mission to use your food dollars in a positive way to make that statement to say, no, I do not wanna support that kind of factory farming. I don't wanna support that kind of food that we Americans have been consuming over the last 25 years. I just feel that as a food manufacturer, we have such a huge responsibility for what we are processing, what we are baking, what we are creating as culinary you know, arts people. We are really doing a, a wonderful thing. We're making wonderful uh, homemade pies just as naturally as we can, like grandma made. And so it really you know, hits home to us that if we don't feel good about eating this pie ourselves or our children eating this pie, then we don't wanna sell it to our good um, customers who've 
supported us for 26 years. So here at Akis Pie Company, we're making some big changes. I know so many of you are for it, you're rooting for us, and you're supporting us. I've heard it in the comments below um, how passionate some of you are um, about the chemicals and the pesticides that we're finding on our food. So I just wanted to let you know here at Akats, not only are the owners, Dave and I, doing something about it, but all of our kids uh, that are working in our business, all of our managers and our leadership and all of our employees are hearing the message that Dave and I are wanting our company to go so that I got everybody online here at Akats Pie Company. We may have a few employees that are like, no, I don't believe in this mission. Uh, I don't like it, I don't support it. And so that's another way, another piece of business advice for those of you who are watching as entrepreneurs or startup businesses. Really get your core values down before you launch this ship because we've got a ship with 100 employees on it and there may be some employees that we've hired in before we put these statements down in writing. So my suggestion to you is get your mission down, get your core values down, put it down in writing and then you'll attract the right people who you know are thinking the same as you who are excited about your mission so it's more about um, how you feel when you come to work are you part of a bigger thing than just yourself um, so that's my business advice for the day all right you guys i hope you enjoy the video give me a thumbs up if you like it and please share it with a friend um, we are trying to build our subscriber base to 1000 so when we have our 1,000 subscribers, we're gonna do that free slice pie, free slice of pie for all our subscribers again. So feel free to pass this on to someone that uh, you feel would, would like to hear what we have to say here at Atkins Pie Company as well. All right, cheers. This is stuff that we need to talk about. We're in the food business. Some of you guys love being in the food industry. Some of them, some people not so much. So what I'm trying to do is attract a group of people that can help move the company in the right direction. This is called 2020 and beyond. So by next year, we'll be hitting our 27th year. Like I said, there might be some people that really care about what we're doing, really care about the pie that we're serving, the bread or whatever we're making that we're serving to the American public. And I'm really concerned about it. My brother-in-law was a farmer for four generations when the GMOs came out, he had to stop farming. He just couldn't do it anymore. But it really um, benefits one company, and that's Monsanto. It doesn't benefit us. It doesn't benefit the farmers. And I've talked to a lot of farmers about um, all of the chemicals that they put on their land. But we're still losing topsoil to that tune every year. 6.9 billion pounds of topsoil is about the size of Illinois. Every year, we're losing that. Where does it go? Where's it, where do we lose it to? Does it evaporate like the Dust Bowl? What happens is we're losing it because we're spraying herbicide, pesticides, fertilizers, all this crap in there, killing the biology and the holding mechanism, the holding structure to hold the soil together, all that organic matter, all that biology that's feeding off each other under the soil that we don't see, all the nematodes and microarthropods and protozoa and bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi, they're all working together, uh, eating the different things that are going on in there, creating uh, organic matter and chemicals that the plant is then uptaking to make a nutritious plant. But we, we're killing that stuff off for short-term gain. We can spray nitrogen on a, on a plant and make it grow really fast and hard and green out, but it's the short-term gain. It's going too fast. Um, so we're killing off the biology and it's ending up when the rain hits it at 35 miles an hour boom it's compacting that soil it's washing that soil away you guys have all seen it on the news it's going into our drainage ditches our creeks our rivers it's running down our Great Lakes it's running down eventually what right through the Corn Belt down the Great Mississippi River and it's spilling out into what? What does the Mississippi spill out into? Oceans. What ocean? The Gulf. The Gulf of Mexico, where we have created the second largest dead zone in the world. But now, what's a uh, GMO? Soybeans and corn. But what the hell, you guys? Wheat is not a GMO. 
What do we use around this plant that's, a, that's used with wheat? Everything. Yeah, our, flour, everything. our flour, right? But it's not, a, a, it's not a GMO. Why the hell are we spraying it with Roundup trying to kill it? Anyone a farmer here know why, they, why the hell they do that? So a dec desiccant kills it off, dries it off, so it can be harvested easier, easier. But what it really does, it kills it off and it dries it off, but if the wheat is still bright green and it hasn't come to full uh, maturity, should we eat a seed that's still underripe? No. 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 Should we eat a grain? Should we eat an apple or a peach that's underripe? Is it going to be nutritious for us? Hell no goes in the compost pile. I don't eat green, sour, you know, apples or peaches or wheat. It doesn't, it has not stayed on the grain stalk long enough to collect all the nutrition. So why are farmers, they're spraying it with Roundup to make it come to seed head faster because they want to hurry up, get that off the field. Why are they in such a rush? Slow down. Let mother nature do her trick, right? It might take three more weeks to stay there and collect the nutrition in the field. Why do farmers want to rush the matter? So they can get their GMO corn off that field and their GMO soybean off that field. Well, winter's coming too, and they need to hurry up and get every, they got way too much stuff planted. They're trying, not that they're trying to get rich and make a whole lot of money, because I can guarantee you farmers are not getting rich. So do we really keep our community and our families in mind if we're selling products with glyphosate in it? Have we checked the specifications on the glyphosate, on the wheat that comes in? Do we know if our wheat has been sprayed out in the fields? So we do business with two big flour mills here in Michigan, Star of the West and uh, King's Mill, right? And you see that on your packaging, is it King's Mill? Yeah. And Star of the West, sometimes it used to be Star of the West. So I emailed both of those companies and I said, oh, I want to see the spec sheets on how much glyphosate is on the wheat. <laughs> and, the, uh, and they emailed me back and they go like, whoa, we're really passionate about this as well. <clears throat> we don't allow farmers to bring their wheat in here to get ground into flour if they have sprayed their fields um, with a, a dissecant like Roundup. I said, oh, I'm so happy that you're on board with that. And they said, but I want to let you know Pandora's box has already been opened. Glyphosate is everywhere. It's in our rain. It's in our waterways. Just like Rachel Carson was talking about DDT, Silent Spring. Glyphosate has already got, gotten everywhere. So I'm like, oh no, well what is your level, <laughs> you know? Don't worry, Wendy, it's well below EPA's uh, recommended daily allowance. <laughs> I don't trust the EPA or the FDA or the USDA to tell me what's safe because when glyphosate first came out, 1993, uh, Roundup, it was patented by Monsanto, they were able to get it into the farmland um, pretty easily and they said to the FDA, it's safe, it doesn't cause cancer, and they said, all right, well how much will you allow to be in the human food chain? All the way up from our cornflakes to our oatmeal to our muffins to everything, 0.01% parts per million. And I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theory person, but so they were at this much parts per million when they first started out. Now they are at 30.0 parts per million. So do you guys, who takes a probiotic every day or who eats yogurt or oh, drinks? Kombucha. We're all trying to build our gut bacteria up because that fights the pathogens, the bad bacteria that comes in, like a cancer cell or, a, you know, something that's going to cause some kind of illness or sickness and take hold and grow. So just like you're trying to keep, you know, everybody healthy with the right biology. So this, I've done a lot of research, and at the end of this program, I have two pages of resources that, if you want this PowerPoint presentation with those resources, I'd be happy to give. You. This is Dr. Stephanie Seneff um, and her colleagues. She's a uh, senior research scientist at MIT, and she's done some pretty phenomenal studies. But this is what she's saying that glyphosate does. It's a micro, uh, micro it's an antimicrobial. So that means it kills off our biology. We have seven pounds of biology just in our gut from here to here but we're covered in all kinds of little creepy crawlies, right? And we need them. We don't want to kill them off. So
So this was interesting. I'm just going to explain the first chart to you, and then we're going to blast through the rest of the charts real easy. Can you guys all see that? So this is called an overlay chart. So my uh, scientist that I was talking about from MIT was able to grab some of these charts and overlay them with incidents of health issues. So the chart that she started with was this chart. The blue line is percentage of just two genetically modified crops that are planted, soybean and corn. And so 1975, we were planting none. Right around 93, and guess who the first state was that GMOs were introduced to, from what I understand? The Great Lakes state. Thanks. What a great state to experiment with, the one that we have so much water, right? So they, they started planting the GMO seeds. This is the blue line. Look at how crazy. That's like Thanksgiving, right? And then the red line is how much glyphosate. Now, they told us we wouldn't have to spray so much of this herbicide if we use the GMO crops. Well, it doesn't look like that's a factual statement because it looks like we're spraying a lot more Roundup and glyphosate. The, this yellow line is the rate of thyroid cancer. Now here was the trend, it was kind of jig-jagging around here, and the green line tells us what they thought the trend would be per 100,000 people. So I know that the population has grown, but that they took that into consideration when, they, when the health, you know, the scientists that are studying thyroid cancer did. This was their forecast, just like we forecast what our sales are going to be, we forecast what our labor is going to be, right? We come in here every Tuesday. We meet about our forecast and then what we actually did, right? They forecasted that it would still be around zero between, you know, maybe just one per every 100,000 to under that for thyroid cancer. But look at how it shot up, you guys. That seems like a really crazy coincidence. Here's another chart. Again, the blue line and the red line are the same. Soy, GMO soybeans, GMO corn. And here's the prediction was the green. This is for incidence for diabetes out of every 1,000 people. But now look at it. It's up to almost 90 per every 1,000. A lot of people are getting diabetes. Maybe we're just drinking too much high fructose corn syrup. Here's another one, hypertension. But look at that green line. Why is this stuff going up, do you think? So we're killing off the good biology that's in our body that's supposed to be fighting this stuff. So what about animals that are fed? Let them eat it. We're going to kill them anyway, like you said, right? If they get sick, we'll just kill them and eat them. So let them eat the damn GMOs. So this is what uh, Americans are doing. This is you, if, if you eat it, you should be able to support this. You should be able to look at it. 98% of the animals that we eat in this population, in this country, come out of cages. 98%. I do not want to participate in this machine. At Atkins Pie Company as the owner, I do not want to support this. And I need help from my community here of team people, team leaders, and team members to let's break away from this. I don't want to, sp these pigs can't even turn around. Pigs, have you ever seen a pig like on a real farm? Yeah. What do they do? Roll around, <laughs> scratch their back, take their little bulldozer noses and root in the dirt. They're on cement. They got no dirt. They can't roll around on their back, so they're scratching their backs on this pole. This is still going on. So 95% of the animals consumed in the United States are kept on in confinement. CAFO. C-A-F-O, that's what that's called. They had to coin an acronym for it, CAFO. Concentrated Animal Feed Operation. It's not a farm. Farmers, and you'll see on our mission statement, the farmers that Ackett's Pine wants to support, I, I want to see these true farmers who know the heartbeat of the land, who know uh, when cows or animals should be rotated on their farm. They should be stewards of our clean air, our clean water, not contributing to the dead zone, and our soil. So if we have good soil, then we can filter water and it doesn't get run off. But if you got dirt, it's running off. This is what I want to support, real live animal farms. This is what pigs want to do. They want to be in the dirt. They want to be rooting around with their little bulldozer noses. And you say, Wendy, this is impossible. We got McDonald's, we got a machine to feed. <laughs>
This is a farm that this is where this is good things happening. Cows are being rotated from pasture to pasture. So once the cows eat a third of that pasture and they poop on another third of it and they stomp down another third of it like the buffalo used to, what did the buffalo do Move after on. they did that? Move on. What? Move on. They moved on. They didn't stand in, they don't poop where they eat. They keep moving. They only eat the grass down so far too, so they yeah. won't eat it after a while. T to me that looks like they're getting ready to get moved because you have to worry about the herd under the soil. Are we giving back to the soil? We're taking off, but are we giving back? We're worried about the little protozoa and the microarthropods and the mycorrhizal fungi and all those little, the herd under the soil that I talked about earlier that's doing that cycle nutrient. But if we overgraze, then we expose our soil and then we create dirt. So these guys are, what are they giving back to the little microbes? Wonderful fertilizer, yeah. I want to support these guys. I don't want to support this guy. This is a concentrated animal feedlot. Cows are ruminators. They need to be eating grass and the healthy alfalfa and timothy and clover and all kinds of things that grow in the fields. They shouldn't be licking dirt all day or eating. They're, they're so damn hungry, they're going to eat that corn that's put out there for them. And then they're going to get sick and they're going to get belly aches. They should never eat grain. Cows should never eat corn. They're ruminators. They have four stomachs. They should eat grass. Cage-free. Oh, we're supporting cage-free eggs here, right? This is cage-free. This isn't satisfactory to me either. That's what you do when you try to do short-term gain. Get as many of them crammed in there as tight as you can. This is what I want to support. So what are we going to do here at Ackett's Pie Company? What decisions should we make? We're going to meet our farmers, and you guys remember when the Amish guys came around and toured twice so far. They're up in Mayo, Michigan, and I was able to find them. They were doing the right thing. They were pasture rotating their cows to do. We have electric fence, right? Our great grandfathers would have died for this technology instead of building and chopping split rail fences, right? We had electric fence. We could rotate these cows around the pasture. So these Amish guys were like, we've been doing a lot of this good farming all of our life. Monsanto never influenced them to plant GMOs or to buy their chemicals. They've been getting animals out on the land for generations. That we're gonna be paying them three times more for their grass-fed milk. How much do you think we'll have to raise the price for that? Only 15 cents for something that we can help farmers stay on the family farm not go, you know how many dairies right now are sending all their cows to slaughter? They just cannot afford to stay in business. And I feel if a farmer is there for generations on the family farm, they should be able to stay on the family farm and make a decent living for their family. Feel free to reach out or now that you're thinking and you're digesting, this is the direction that we want to go at Atkins Pie Company. We want to make a difference on the planet and our community with your mind, you know, with it, keeping everything in our mind of what we should be doing sustainably, but not sustaining the bad farming practices, but regenerating. So I don't even like to use the word sustainable. I like to say, I don't want to sustain that GMO soybean field that's across the street from me, or sustain that 30 cows that, that my neighbor has penned up at us. I don't want to sustain that. You know, we want to evolve and grow and regenerate the soil. So that's where we want to go in the next 20 plus years. Thank you for your time, you guys.